Welcome to this video on cleaning speculum telescope mirrors. There's generally three things a person might want to do to their mirrors. One is to dust them and you can use uh, compressed air for that. The other is to actually clean it and cleaning removes dust but the real target for cleaning is to remove the oil from people's skin, remove fingerprints. So that's what we're going to target here. The next step that you can do is polish and what you need to need to need to hear is polishing removes material it actually removes the base material of the mirror so if you're attempting to clean an historic mirror just know that you're going to be removing base material this would be like going and polishing the pyramids you would to polish it you'd have to sand it down until you removed all the outside material from the pyramid and got back to a smooth face what you're going to end up with is something that wasn't historical so please really reconsider whether or not you're going to polish any historic mirrors. For this case, we're just going to wash them and uh, clean them. You probably won't be cleaning historic mirrors because they aren't being handled. But if you do happen to handle one, you can wash them. You can use the same technique to, to wash those as well. If the fingerprints or the oil has already started to oxidize that mirror, then cleaning is not going to help. It may slow the process a little bit by removing any existing oil. But it's really not going to have a, an impact. So there's probably no reason to, to clean those mirrors. The nice thing about my mirrors is they're designed to be handled. So people are gonna hold them and you're gonna to need to know how to clean them. And here's the video showing you how to do it. Okay, so we're ready to start cleaning. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get all our supplies together. And so we're gonna need distilled water, make sure it's distilled. Um, we're gonna want our soap. I'm using Dawn Platinum 5, something or another, it works. Um, so I haven't switched, I haven't experimented around for the soaps. You're going to want a foam pad for the bottom of your sink and it actually might be a better idea to get or a good idea as well to get a um that plastic drip pan that drips down into the sink and hangs over this edge that way you protect this edge because if the mirror hits this it's going to shatter um, i may drop one later and show you how easily they shatter i've broken a lot of them um, so once we get all that set up we want to make sure one of the weird things that happens with these milk jugs these water jugs they end up sitting around either in the store or in your house you get a lot of dust build up here and a lot of dust build up in here. So make sure you dust this off before you uh, set it up to use it. So I'll be washing here, doing a little bit of handling here, and then I'm gonna lay out uh, some paper towels up against that splash, and that's where we're actually gonna let them dry. So get that all set up. Once that is set up, now you can wash your hands. And as part of this step, you're gonna wanna remove any cats. Shout out to the contaminator, easily the best YouTube cat out there. Um, you're gonna wanna remove your jewelry and rings the the jewelry and the rings themselves will actually hold uh dust but then they'll also uh hold dust pinched in between the ring in your skin or the piece of jewelry in your skin so remember we polish this down to 8,000 grit so any bit of dust is grit to these mirrors so you want all of that off once you're set up once everything's ready then you want to wash your hands and you generally want to wash them at least twice it's just a risk of, of getting grit underneath your fingernails or whatever coming out and scratching the mirror. If you scratch the mirror, it's not the end of the world. But to extend the time it takes before you have to polish it again, you may as well clean your hands and make sure they're really, really clean. Um, clear of oils for sure, but uh, any dust. So we'll do that. And you want to pay particular attention to getting in around the tops of the fingernails and under the fingernails. It's not a bad idea to have a fingernail cleaner. I have one actually in the garage. Um, I didn't bring it in. And I generally wash up my arms. Now, when you dry your hands, you have two choices. I'm gonna put water all over my mirrors. You have two choices. You can use, well you have several choices. You can use a towel. And this towel has been washed in this house by our washer and dryer and then it sat around. So it is collecting dust. So what I've done now is wash my hands, remove all the dust, debris, and everything else that are on them, and then I just recoated them with a towel that's probably loaded with them. Now I don't know, um, it may have come out perfectly clean, everything's great, but the nice thing about paper towels is that unless something weird's going on at the factory, they're fairly clean, and they're, um, I've never actually scratched anything with the, uh, dust from the paper towel. So you wash your hands, dry your hands off with the paper towels. You're gonna to go through a lot of paper towels. You just have to deal with that and go to your happy place with the amount of paper towels you're gonna to use cleaning these mirrors. So once you've washed your hands twice, gotten everything out, you're ready to set up, then you can pull out the paper towels and uh, set them up over here. Set up your drying area. 
So what I generally do is take a paper towel, set it up along that side. This mirror is going to set just like that and dry. And one of the tricks you can do to keep that from happening is, and you want to do this with distilled water, is apply just a little bit of distilled water to this. That's more than enough. And all this is going to do is stick it to the table or to the counter. It's now it's not going to move. So now I can set that up there and it will stay where, it want, it, where you left it. And you can do that with your finger. You can just dip your finger in there and touch it to that. So both of these mirrors will end up sitting right there. They'll be drying. And the other thing that I want to do is pull the last little drop off the bottom. And often what I do is just take a paper towel, fold it, and touch it right to that tip. And you'll see it when I do it. And I touched it down into this wet, and it's going to hold it right there, and it's perfect. So I'm going to do that to both sides, and we'll get ready to set this up. So there's one. And I've already cleaned off the counter. I've wiped the counter down so it's clean and ready to go. There's no dust on it. Um, and then I can just tap that like that. So you set that up where you want it. That's probably a little too high. Set it up a little lower. All I want to do is just touch that tip. And now it's going to stay in place, and I can let that set for an hour or two. So now we're ready to get started. These mirrors are notorious um, for shattering when exposed to changes in temperature. So the temperature that you set the sink at is critical, plus or minus about four or five degrees Celsius. It's not um, critical enough to bring out a thermometer, but if it's hot in your house, um, hot in the museum, then you need the temperature coming out of the water to match or coming out of the tap to match that. Now the initial thing that we're going to do is just rinse. And also the other thing is you, you bump this up to add more hot water. The hot water is coming from the tank to here and that hot water temperature is going to change. Don't be surprised um, by that change. Let it run long enough that uh, it's stabilized and this has been running earlier so it's fine. So the initial thing we want to do is blow the dust off of this mirror and you can use a, a spray gun, um, compressed air, and I'll show you how to do that later. But for this sake, all we're going to do, for this purpose, all we're going to do is just run water over it. And all we're doing is picking up any loose material. Now remember, these things should be fairly clean. You're not scrubbing food off of this. You're just moving dust. So we've done that. And then I'm going to take a shot of soap. And I like the foaming soap because it's already um, mixed in with water. It's already dispersed. So it, it's easier to do this with than um, a straight dish soap. And all you're doing is hydroplaning your finger across that soap and all we're doing is lifting oils we're not pulling anything hard off we're just lifting oils so then I'm gonna run it underneath the sink and you can take a look and see if you have any uh, fingerprints still there any oils you shouldn't but if you do you can do this again and just let it rinse so now my sink is actually getting warmer and I'm gonna Cool that back off, try to get back to room temperature. It doesn't matter once it's under there that much. Um, depends on your sink, how fast it changes. Okay, so now I've, I'm done washing. Now what I need to do, I, uh, this is a key phrase, I've flushed all the soap off of this mirror and all the soap off my fingers. So there's no more soap here. That's why I'm still running this. Now what I need to do is flush the tap water off of this mirror. To do this, because I'm going to set this up against the wall that way, I've switched it to my left hand so that all I have to do is rotate it and put it. And I'm going to take this jug and I am going to now flush again, using that word flush, all of the tap water off of that mirror. Now, if everything's done right, there's no oils on my hand and my hand's rapidly making more oils. Uh, but for this so far, we're fine. And you can see the water already running off. It's building up down here at the bottom. I'm going to move it. And set it right there, and then I'm going to touch, ah, touch just the tip of that to the uh, uh, glass. And we'll do this other one since I have it out. And I don't know if you can see this one, if it shows up, if you can see the fingerprints all over it. Um, I don't know what I was doing, but apparently I was distributing the fingerprints that day. And so, take our soap, just hydroplaning, just trying to lift that those oils off and that's really all you need to do and wow this is nice so um the fingerprints that are on here were left before i i traveled to uh london to drop off the mirrors so these have been sitting for three weeks now and you can see them oxidized in so we'll polish this one we'll use this one to polish 
So now I've rinsed, I flushed, I flushed all the soap off. Now I need to flush the distilled water off. And I'm flushing up my hand and up my wrist to make sure that nothing that drips onto this mirror is going to be tap water. I need it to always drip distilled water. And then I touch that tip and that's it. So here we have our two mirrors. And I've just touched the tip to this one, just touched the tip to that one, and you can still see the water droplets on it. And we're just going to let it sit there. Now, it should be, if everything's perfect, that should be perfectly distilled water and evaporate completely clean. It's never perfectly distilled water, and it will never evaporate completely clean, partly because there's dust floating in the air and sticking to it. So it's going to get close. Once this is dry, we'll come back in an hour, take a look at them, and then we'll do this final touchy polishing stage with the towel okay we're back it's been a little over an hour i have some water droplets right here uh the other mirrors dried off nicely so the water pool down here but part of it went that way you can pull your uh, towel away and tap that and suck that off and tap that and pull all that water off of there then the next step you can do your next step you want to do is inspect the mirror and see if there's any water stains left behind and to do that it's fairly simple to do that i simply pick up the mirror take a look at it and inspect it for any other smudges now this is the one that was smudged fairly harshly before i left for uh, uh london and you can see all of those fingerprints in there kind of rocking around hopefully you'll hit the light just right and those aren't going to come out now i can take this towel now this is a clean towel and lightly rub on those and see if they come up come off and because i already know these are uh oxidized mirrors you can actually see my fingerprint in there um this oxidation rubbing it's not going to help but this one is in better shape and i have water droplets kind of forming everywhere and i want to get rid of those because they're just going to leave uh, little dust rings around it so i have a clean paper towel I'm going to fold it just like this and I'm going to do initial light sweep across the mirror then I'm going to fold it again and get a little bit harder so I still have it's not I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this mirror and remember pressure is your enemy and I'm just going to mop up the last of those drops and they're they're all gone now if there's um, a spot that I need to, to, to apply a little more pressure in this little spot right there and I think that's probably a an actual scratch from when I was making it. This is These are junk mirrors um, from different experiment. Um, I can just fold it like this and you can feel the pressure that you're applying and you can apply a little more and a little more and eventually you can push harder. Now at some point this is wood, right? It's going to start scratching the surface of that mirror. Um, so you kind of have to play it by ear. Do you apply more pressure? Oh, that one came off. Do you apply more pressure or do you uh, just leave it. No one's going to notice that when you're handing it out to to uh, tourists and asking them to take a look at these mirrors and see what they think about them. Um, no one's going to see those spots. So after a while, they'll start building up enough and become a problem, and then you're going to want to repolish. But until then, that mirror is clean. You can see the humidity from my finger, um, depending on how that mirror is set, coming off and uh, staining the mirror or uh, showing up on the mirror. You're also moving oils off your finger doing this. So I'm holding that oil is moving from my finger across that mirror. So it's a good idea to make sure your hand is as dry as possible. It, li it uh, limits how much uh, oil moves back across as you're holding it. And that's it, you're done, you're clean. So how often should you clean it? The fingerprints will start showing up immediately. I mean, it, as soon as the oil touches it, it starts oxidizing the surface. Now. I've had uh, a big one sitting on my desk, a five inch sitting on my desk for a few years and people pick it up and touch it like this and handle it and look at it. And I'm okay with it. All I simply do is take a, I don't use a paper towel, I use a, a, a lens cleaning cloth, a lint free cloth and just wipe it down and kind of polish it up. Now what I've done, and this is weird, I've uniformly smeared the oil from their hands across the whole surface of the mirror. So it actually has tarnished the mirror but only a little bit and you can't tell. Now, if it's a fingerprint, it sticks out. So I do that for, I don't know, a year and then uh, take it home and polish it. And it's really, because these are flat mirrors, it's really simple to polish. So you don't actually have to go through washing it all the time, but keep in mind, every time you rub it and apply pressure, you run the risk of picking up one little grain of dust in there 
and scratching the face of your mirror. It's not the end of the world. You can polish it out and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Um, but it's annoying and it takes time. So the little care, these should last a very, very long time. As long as they're exposed to moisture, as long as they're exposed to humidity or any oils, they'll oxidize. And uh, so you want to keep them, you want to store them in a uh, dry environment, as dry as you can get it. If you can get it down to zero, it'll stop the oxidation completely. Thanks for watching. And special thanks to the Royal Society, Woolsthorpe Manor, the Herschel Museum of Astronomy, and the Blacksmith Shop of Omaha.